Let's take this off. Show people what's up. Yeah, but... <laughs> Raw vegan, baby. Since birth. <laughs> but I'm vegan, baby. I'm raw vegan. Alright, so this is uh, Sarah's last day here in Vancouver, BC. Not my last, last, last. Because I'm coming back. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, for this trip. Yeah. You're going home tomorrow. <laughs> She's going home tomorrow to wherever she lives. I won't say here on camera in case you don't want people to know. <laughs> She's going home tomorrow. I'm from... Yeah. I'm going home. She's going home. Don't stop her, please. <laughs> uh, and what did we do today? We did a 12 hour walk. We went for a 12 hour audio book walk. You don't say 12 hours. We say we went for a 12 hour walk. Hmm. Not a 12 hours walk. Interesting. Yeah. 12 hour walk. Okay. The walk was 12 hours. Yeah. It was a 12 hour walk. Okay, so basically we walked for 12 hours. Hours. We walked hours. for 12 hours. <laughs> okay. And uh, we left at 6 a, 6 15 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And we got home at 6 30. 6 30. And people might be wondering why did we do this? Oof. And uh, a couple reasons why we did it. First reason, primarily, was because we wanted to. It was an idea I had from a long time ago. I was like, I just want to walk for 12 hours with an audiobook from my house all the way to the lakes, all the way to the forest, and walk back. And then Sarah and I wanted to do it for a while, ever since she got here in BC. Like, yeah, let's go for this 12 hour walk. And we just didn't do it until we only had this last day left. We're like, oh, let's do it on, on a Thursday. It'll be super, super sunny. Yeah, the, yeah that was a big reason because the weather was not. That was a lot of rain. Leading up until today, there was a lot of rain. Today yeah. was the sunniest day. Sarah even got a little summer. We both got some tan today. So that was nice. Um, and what books do we listen to? I listen to The Art of Living. The Art of Living by Bob Proctor. And I listen to uh, Love Yourself, Like Your, like your li Life Depends on it. Love yourself like your life depends on it. You listen to it today? And not all of it. No, a bit of it today. A bit of it. By Kamal Ravikant. And that's it? Those two? Yeah. And music. And music. And some... We had conversation. And tons of conversation, yeah. Yeah. I listened to Art of Living as well by Bob Proctor. So good. It's a four hour. It's a four hour audiobook. I listened to maybe an hour and a half of it today. But I've listened to it several times before. It's an amazing audiobook. And I listened to uh, a lot of Seth Godin's Poke the Box. Shout out to Joey B for uh, suggesting that one. That's a good one. Uh, and then uh, I was going to listen to Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends on it, but mm -hmm. just didn't get around to it. And I also listened to a little bit of uh, Stephen Pressfield's Do the Work. Great book, great book, great book. And then for music, we just listened to a bunch of uh, Black Mill, mostly Black Mill and Russ. Yeah. Black Mill and Russ on repeat. And Kelly. Oh, you listen to Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, and tips and tricks for anyone out there wanting to do it, we recommend doing it on a day that's going to be sunny, nice weather. Mm -hmm. um, if that's you're, true. if it's going to be too sunny, too hot, make sure you uh, maybe bring some natural sunscreen so you don't get sunburned or something if you're going to be out. In the exposed like we were, um, or just bring an umbrella or something. Walk around with an umbrella. Bring but, uh, some warm clothes. If you're doing it when it's cold, not in the sun like, like we did today. If you're doing it in the cold like we did, no, but bring some warm clothes. Yeah, when we first left, thing in the morning, so cold. So cold. Every little bit of sun that was coming through the trees or like <laughs> through the clouds the first thing in the morning, we'd stop <laughs> for like a minute. We'd just stand there and be like, Oh my god, so good. If we hadn't done that, the morning would have been horrible. Yeah. The sun actually warmed us up. Like mm -hmm. six thirty in the morning, the sun's up. Seven in the morning, the sun's up. We take so our hands grateful. up, we put up to the sun. We're like, oh, like, whew, like it's a fire. It was so nice. Yeah. Uh, that was really nice. So definitely recommend warm clothes or at least a warm day. Um, second tip would be to bring two pairs of shoes. We yeah. brought two pairs of shoes uh, for a couple of reasons. First reason was to bring a couple of pairs of shoes in case one got muddy because we're going through trails. Mm -hmm. One got muddy, we have to mud or got wet. We have to switch them up. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but 
The other reason was to just switch up the shoes halfway through and, and multiple times so your feet get a chance to get go into different positions. It's like when you're sleeping, you're on one side and you flip to the other side oh, yeah. and you flip in your back, flip in your stomach. Your shoes, your feet need different positions as well. So Sarah went uh, with her morels and she went with her diesel shoes or like dress shoes, whatever sounds. Dress shoes, style shoes, cash shoes. Tennis. Tennis shoes and then barefoot. So Sarah did three styles. I went in my Brooks and then I went in my um, Freet shoes. Got my Freet shoes from Ethics. Hit up ethics.com to get a pair of your Freets. Uh, so I switched it up there. Went with those two. Amazing. I'm so glad I did that because I started out with my Brooks because it was really, really cozy, really cushy first thing in the morning. And I kept my feet warm. And then after three hours, I switched to my flats, my minimal shoes, like absolutely nothing on there. Wore those for a good like six hours. And then I switched. Eight hours, I switched back to my Brooks for the last couple of hours. Thank God I did because our feet were killing us the last two hours. The last two hours of the, the walk were the hardest for our yeah. bottoms of our feet. The thing with um, very thin, minimal uh, shoes is when you go downhill on the concrete. We mm -hmm. were mostly on rocks, gravel, yeah, and dirt. Dirt, concrete. We. Yeah. It was, uh, it was painful. Impact. Impact. A lot of impact going downhill, yeah. Uh, so it felt good to switch it up Yeah. when we were going downhill. Pardon. And um, if you're wearing minimal shoes as well, you're going to feel like every rock you step on as well. So if you're going for a 12-hour walk, make sure you've been wearing, and you want to wear minimal shoes, make sure you've been wearing minimal shoes for years. Don't go. Don't oh, buy yeah. a pair of minimal shoes, zero-drop shoes, and then go for a 12-hour walk. I've been wearing zero-drop shoes for like, Five, six, seven, eight years now. Uh, yeah. Sarah probably the same. Yeah. Uh, but if you're it's your first time wearing minimal shoes or zero drop shoes or low low heel shoes, your calf muscles are going to get absolutely destroyed. Your Achilles heel is oh, going to yeah. get destroyed. I remember my first run with minimal shoes. Mm -hmm. So sore. Right? So sore for like a week. For couldn't even walk. I had to walk like duck foot for the next <laughs> couple weeks or a couple days because my yeah. calves were destroyed. Um, but they feel good initially. Um, so. That's the tip right there. The other tip is, was uh, food. We kept our food super, super simple. We ate, between the two of us, uh, about eight bananas. So four bananas each. I probably had maybe five. You maybe had three, whatever. I definitely had more bananas than you. That was quick. So about eight bananas between the two of us. And then dates. We probably had uh, ten dates each, maybe. Probably about 20 dates. Soaked dates. Less than that. I probably had... I had three at... Lunch. You ate less than me for sure. And maybe four or five. Yeah, about ten. Yeah. Most Sarah had about ten dates. I maybe had twelve or whatever. Um, we still had some. And we still had some left over, but they were soaked. We kept, kept we soaked them for. Uh, it's best to soak your dates for like a week before you eat them. That way they're just completely soaked. But we soaked these overnight. We only soaked them for like twelve hours or something. Uh, but they were still good. Glad we soaked them. Hey, they were yeah. way better. Easy, easy to digest when they're soaked. So we had bananas, we had dates, and then we had uh, two apples, organic apples. One each. One each. And then we had a, a bag, a mixed bag of sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, some almonds, and walnuts. Yeah. And uh, we just put them in a Ziploc bag, mixed it up, and then just took a couple handfuls of those at the end of each meal. Um, and then just a bunch of water, just drank water as well at these breaks. And we had three, two meals. Two meals, that's it. Two meals. We had one meal three hours in, and then another meal, another three hours in. Yeah. So we had a meal at, at hour three, and a meal at hour six, and after that, we didn't really eat until we got home. Yeah. As soon as I got home, I showered, and I was climbing to the shower, grabbed a banana, ate the banana in the shower. Yeah. Quite hungry. We're about to go eat dinner right now, actually. Um, so, any other tips, tricks? Oh, yes. Boy, we're really sore right now. <laughs> when we stand up after this video, Sarah had to crawl into this video, she couldn't even walk into the video. When we get up to walk, yeah. we, they, we're so stiff, we like walk around like old people. Yeah, the thing, uh, we were fine all day. All day. Like, for sure, our feet, like the last maybe four hours, three hours, were starting yeah, to yeah, yeah, feel yeah. something. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the last hour was the worst. Yeah, last hour the feet were like speaking to us. Us speaking. The feet were speaking. Screaming, maybe. Sarah's were screaming. Sarah's were like 
intolerable. I guess it'll tolerate, but it's still uncomfortable. But Sarah had to go barefoot, and that worked really well. Well, after oh, you went right. barefoot, you put your shoes back on, and it was like, no problem. Yeah, I felt so good. Um, so, yeah, switch it up, go barefoot if you want. But I uh, expect to get sore after doing 12 hours with no, tri- with no prior training. A big tip I would say, if you want to do 12 hours, if you want to join the 12-hour club, then work up to it. Do a, see how you feel on a one-hour walk. If you can do that, no problem. Do a two-hour walk. Do a three-hour walk. Do a six-hour walk. Yeah. I wonder what it will be if uh, we went only on flat. Yeah. Very different. But we a did a lot of hills. Yeah, a lot of hills. So, yeah. This, this was a, the only training I'd done prior to this was a seven hour walk, very similar conditions like this in Costa Rica. I actually ran the first hour and then I walked for six hours and uh, did that and I was uh, incredibly sore the next day and that day. So that was about a month ago. Um, so now a month later I'm doing this 12 hour walk with no run at the start which made it so much easier. Time went by so fast. Oh yeah. We didn't believe it. 12 hours had gone by. Uh, we were coming back. We were way faster on our way back. Way faster. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it felt, we were at the end and we were so surprised. Like, we yeah. did it. Yeah, no problem. We're almost home. Time flew by. Flew by, um, yeah. But, yeah, now, now we're quite hungry. We didn't eat much at all, as you, as you just heard. We had a, a few dates and a few bananas. So probably less than, a thou- about a thousand calories each. I maybe, I definitely had more than you. I maybe had... 400 calories more than you, all the nuts and seeds I was having, and more dates, more bananas, whatever, but very minimal calories, and didn't feel didn't fine. feel like, oh my god, we need to eat, like most people would feel, and there's so much talk out there, of people saying like, oh, if you're raw vegan, you need to be in the kitchen all day eating, and that's the choice, if you want to graze, you can graze, if you want to have set meals, you can have set meals, um, but Sarah and I have been practicing intermittent fasting now for a while, a while, and uh, a couple of years, I've been doing it for a couple of years. In and out, yeah. On and off. But consistently, right. like non-stop. Yeah, consistently for a few months. Yeah, probably and six, seven, eight months. And now we've been doing like two meals a day, which has totally changed it up once again. It's not like intermittent fast and then graze for the rest of the day. It's intermittent fast and then two meals. So I really like that. And that, that probably made today even easier as well. The body adapts to whatever you put it under. So if you're not eating all the time, you're going to adapt and you're going to get better at not eating all the time. And another tip would be to bring an external battery for your phone or your MP3 player, whatever you're listening to, in case it runs out of battery. Thankfully, ours didn't run out of battery. We had ours on airplane mode the whole time, for the most part. That conserves a lot of battery. And, uh, yeah, once you get your external battery for your phone, you got your food, you got your two pairs of shoes, bring some toilet paper maybe if you want to... Toothbrush. You know, toothbrush. Yeah, we brought toothbrush and floss and toilet paper. So after each meal, we could brush our teeth, and if we had to go to the washroom, we could go to the washroom or toilet, whatever. Um, that's it. That's pretty much all we brought with us. Super light, super minimal. Oh, uh, that's it. No, we bring. Oh, you bought extra clothing because it got too cold, but didn't even use it. Right. Yeah, it was just in case we were wet or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was fine. Pack super super light and um, just build up, build up. I think if you just want to go for the 12-hour walk, you can go for it. Yeah. It also helps to just head out one direction and at the six-hour point, yeah. turn back. That's kind of what we did. But we ended up going out six hours, then going another hour, and then coming back. So coming back was like an hour faster, mm-hmm. for sure. Because we didn't really stop. We just went... Phew. Yeah, we, we stopped at the end to go get some flowers, flowers. Yeah. for her mom. For her, for her mom. <laughs> For his mom. Cool. Uh, that's it. That's all. Peace yeah. out. Thanks for watching. Sarah and I will see each other again in a while. Soon. A couple months. See you at the Canada Fruit Festival? Mm-hmm. And at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Yes. You guys want to come to the Canada Fruit Festival? It's August 10th to the 13th. If you want to come to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, it's August 20th to the 28th, I believe. Maybe it's the 19th to the 27th, whatever. But anyways, use the code COMEFRUITYOURSELF if you want to save 100 bucks or 10% on either of those festivals. Links are...